Hey there everybody and welcome. We're discussing Cross by the Unity, the basic download about different things. And my name is Tavo DRC. I'm a Christian. I don't care. You know, I'm a believer. I want to walk the walk and talk the talk and keep up your heart as best I can. And I am happen to be sent for this mission, apostolic ministry, to the leadership as a dressed in a female earth suit that is Caucasian, Western European heritage. So let's talk about that, this whiteness, all right? One of the things I found is that I have a spirit that is very diverse. God uses me that's with the common man, with the white collar, it doesn't matter, with the people of all colors, because they get me if they have a pure heart themselves in their race. I'm, I have much diversity on me, and I can handle a lot of draw, vibes and types and colors, and I have innate rhythm God has given me. So I've often questioned how come I have this a typical side, a typical call, a typical name, whatever it is. It's for the saints, for the body of Christ. And also I want you to know that I'm going to talk about the colonial issue. You know, a lot of big about white, black. I've researched it. I've always felt that people who are in a pure heart mode that have a more discerner, perceiver background nature usually get me internationals, black people, different tribes, and they have more rhythm, they're more childlike, and in fact, they can be very factual and very functional, but I meant down to earth people. So I've never had an issue as a person who is a, as a female. My dad didn't raise me under Levitical patriarchy or matriarchy. But my mom came, and this is important. I'm trying to get to this. All right. I'm trying to tell you that Tava DRC came from Tavo Johnson and her, you know, the father. And the mother was Noni Simmons, John, Noni Simmons Johnson. And that she had that matriarchal, patriarchal sign that did come from colonial, high shelf colonial. But they were Christians. You can have a Christian version. And so there are days when, because I've researched it. First, I want to say that I've researched on chat, GBT, AI, the origins of the white race. The origin of the white race. And it comes back from the African continent. I always thought so. I always got, you, you know, listen. It comes from Africa. It also said that because of the sunshine, the lighting through the years, the Celtic race, all those things came forth later. All right. Jesus was from the Middle East, frankly. I never thought anything different. I wasn't brought up to think I was a white whelp. Because, let me say this, I was raised by a two kinds. Dad, servant leader, mild-mannered, joyful, smart, educated. And all the parents were educated grandparents as far back as I know. Bible believers, equal opportunity, real respectful, no racist, no accusation, no, you know, like that. You have to fight something, you know, you can have to fight your, you know, pride, educate, you know, your birth, your birth or whatever. Dad didn't have that on him, and I try not to have it myself. Mom, let me say this, mom, who is a real loving of Jesus, you can't help if you're born patriarchal, but I knew her mama. I didn't know my grandfather, her father, but I knew that her grandmother wouldn't like that either. I don't know what it was, but there is something about the matriarch patriarch streak that can be mean and controlling, and I isolated. What's the difference between white people? All right, what's the difference between, you know, I'm not going to do the black people. You have differences too, but I'm saying, what's the difference when I run into white people that get me, that like me, because I'm a friend, just a person, a choice person. And what are the kind that frees up in Christian ministry? This is what started it. The LP freezes up whenever this person who's not white but has a diverse energy, different energy than them, not a controller, and they want to control so I'm learning through decades of experience how to deal with this. So there are two kinds of white people. There's we-centric, we are the world, colonial, we're used to rolling, that's my opinion, that are not diverse, maybe they want to be, but they're in ministry, the patriarchy and the matriarchy. I am not a matriarch, patriarch person. Dad was not. He was servant leader. He wasn't patriarch or matriarch, you know, he wasn't like that. Mom had that tendency. All right, so then there's the, that's we-centric, and usually they're, well, are we-centric. You know, they're all we-centric. You can have loving and tough and mean, 
and cruel of slave master ownership in that or not. But let me go. You have to isolate one, one person, one group at a time. All right, then there's We Global. These are my teaching cross-body unity. That's what I'm doing today, cross-body unity. Teaching We Global is more like myself. They're more diverse. They get along. They don't need to be over you. They don't need to be totalitarian. But as a We Global, who's mild-mannered, easy going until I have to be strong like this because of LP, I'm going to say that LP automatically presume they're over all of us, including us. So I speak, I think, because I trigger it, I think I, tr I speak for African Americans, been through bias, been, people have been through warfare, persecution, hell in their home. That is the spirit that one has to find and fight and figure out how to not to be hurt by it when you go to these Hebrew you know, churches and ministries. It's a class system. All right, let me tell you this. When mom who is in heaven, a wonderful Christian, saved Christian, had been raised somehow in the streak, coming down, let me say this, not a racist, but having been privileged, you know, and they were founders and Bible scholars and good people, and my grandfather A.T. Simmons owned, founded insurance companies, I think, in Alabama. Yet they were not biased. But there was a pride, there is a pride, a patriot, and we all work on it. Everybody, black, white, or brown will have a pride. That's just the human race. So the issue is, mom seemed to have this colonial streak. And when she told me about her pedigree, right when I had gotten on fire for the Lord, right before college, I was a Jesus person. So mom, who wanted to, dad didn't have it. He didn't have it. All right. Mom had it. So I can tell the difference. She wanted to tell me her pedigree, our family pedigree. She was a debutante, all of a sudden, you know, in Alabama. I didn't want to hear it. So purposely, back then at 18, I made a choice because I knew the Lord. I said, that isn't right. I don't want to hear about it. So I didn't let her tell me. That's why I really don't know a lot about my, you know, the family or whatever, the family. And so I do know the French Huguenot side was my, her father's father uh, down in, Tavo Church in Cordsville, which is Monk's Corner, South Carolina. And I want to go see it. I haven't seen it yet. But I think you got to go back and analyze. And so mom, because I was involved in Christian ministry around the city in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, crossing the borders of, uh, what do you call it, suburban, urban, pastors gathering to repentance for, this is before Welp came in, in the 90s. This was in the 80s or early 90s. So I was involved in this, and so mom went with me. She went with me, because she was a true person, a true believer. And we went to a black church, African-American church, where they were the leaders of this. And on that night, we all repented from any past slave owner, because they had it. My mama's side did. I don't know about my dad. They had it. We had it in the family. But I want to say, I was also in that mood when people would go around with this scripture that they would always beat themselves on the back, these well-intended intercessors of the region, and they'd say, oh yeah, we, you know, we're all, you know, we're lowly because we did this to the indigenous, we did this to that. Well, yeah, you want to repent, and you never want to do it again. You want to train people not to do it. But you don't have to have this, oh, self-flagellating always redoing it. You need to train people now, Ephesians 2, 14 and 15, cross body unity. He is our peace, Jesus, who's broken down every wall of partition to make us both one. That means also balanced with, maybe, Jesus said, if you don't forgive everybody, everything, including yourself, but also the people that did whipped your family or raped, ripped them off or did the horrible things, Unless, because you're going to be by yourself before the throne. Unless you forgive everybody, everything, God won't forget, give you either. And that includes me with the whelp and anybody else in my family, you know, before this time, and my own self. God loves you. This is Tabo DRC for Cross Body Unity. More later. Bye bye.